Hello everyone and welcome back to another Stormworks video. In this video we're going to be having a look at my new Chinook helicopter that was released earlier this week on the workshop. I'll be going over the evolution of the helicopter through the major changes that it's seen here in Stormworks since it was built back in August of 2018. And finally we'll also have a look at where it is today and how it actually flies in the world of Stormworks. Now if you're enjoying this video comment below and anything else you'd like to see in any of my future videos while you're there, don't forget that like and subscribe button and click the little bell icon to be notified of my upcoming content as soon as it gets posted. So I said, let's get straight into it and have a look at this helicopter. And starting off, we have all six of the versions of the Chinooks that I have ever released or actually ever made here in game. Now, the point of this is we're going to look at the evolution, see how the helicopter has changed and where Vani has actually gotten to uh, with the current obviously updates and the current components that we have in game. Now starting off this was many months ago where I first originally had the concept of building Chinook okay. This is very basic I don't even know if there's controls in there this is still when we had uh, we just had normal mode you can see here we still have the original jet engines which you can't find anymore um still over there no pipes no advanced mode no nothing okay so this was just the very basics and the very early stages of the Hilo, uh, Chinook helicopter that came to life really with this build um we then moved on to the actual first build that i released this is a fully detailed version in here we added so many different features um, i don't even know if it still works it possibly can do we had the chairs going down the sides there we had our harnesses we had our central harness here at the back we had our ramps uh this was before we even had rails in game uh it, it, you know this is way early stages uh we had our door i don't even know i didn't have a winch here uh we have our main cockpits over here where we didn't have um, screens at that time we didn't have anything it was all very very basic at that time and somehow um we managed to still get uh, an autopilot in here thanks to tt and his logic that he had um so this was a really fun one to build with uh this is obviously a lot of detail went into this at that stage in time now when this came out i decided also to do a long range variant um so this one had increased size fuel tanks on either side it also had a um like a fake uh, gimbal camber here in the front we then also had the uh, fuel probe here a winch on the side a little bit more detail but more or less the same structure applied to it we had the same details in and out um, as you can see if we go into the actual inside of the helicopter you can see the interior pretty much remained the same um, nothing special there but then moving along, we then had a revamp. This is when we eventually got advanced mode. Uh, when we got advanced mode here in Stormworks, I then decided to add a couple things to the helicopter, including the spotlights, uh, obviously the jet engines at the back, but the helicopter more or less stayed the same. Obviously the fuel tanks got added in there uh, with the fuel and things like that. We obviously had the pipes that got added in too. The interior got a little bit of an update. We actually had rail pieces now, uh, so that got updated. Some parachutes got added to the game. Cockpits pretty much stayed more or less the same nothing really got changed here um, so nothing special obviously controls for cameras and things like that oh, sorry for the spotlights um, winch got added there which is pretty cool some more paint blocks but more or less the set shape and the design of the helicopter stayed the same then we came to when we had the arctic update okay this is when i had a lot of fun with this helicopter uh, and this is when obviously we had some new components added in game um, so I ended up having a lot of fun obviously adding in like these compartments where you could go and see inside here is all the logic that was inside there that's when we got microprocessors for the first time uh, I ended up going and making these service hatches on the sides this is when we got shock absorbers for the first time we got skis for the first time we had all these advanced engine things um, paint blocks were really fun obviously the interior we got equipment and we got outfits and things I even added up putting my snowmobile in here um, which was a lot of fun to have um, in terms of other components we got the um we got the new panels which were really cool the new component panels and games so i had a lot of fun adding those in i think this was the first creation i think i added these two um so i had a lot of fun playing with these and obviously wiring those all up and doing all the composite channels for those uh and then uh, you know obviously this was the arctic update we had these this whole helicopter created and then it came to the new updates uh 
where we got a couple extra components in like cameras, video screens and so on and so forth and I thought that this helicopter deserved an update. It really did, it, it needed to have a refresh, this was looking a little bit dated, a little bit old. So what we did is we took that helicopter, we completely stripped it down, engines, components, absolutely everything got taken out whole design got redone uh, and that's where we are today with this helicopter. This helicopter is, I had a lot of fun with this one, uh, it was a nice weekend project uh, where we got it done. Uh, we started off by doing the radio in the front here to the gimbal camera here underneath. Uh, there's a radar underneath it, we have some angled spotlights for landing, we have beautiful uh, view into the actual cockpit here through these windows on the sides. We have a more service hatch here where you can recharge the electrics in there. Uh, along with that is carrying on the outside. We have the beautiful design windows. Uh, so many things going around here. Angled pieces of mic processes, tons of paint blocks. The new obviously jet engines with some modded blocks here. Uh, we had the interior, we'll get to that in a couple of minutes. And going along the side, we also had obviously a winch here uh, with the spotlights that were obviously new, uh, newish. We, along with that, in the actual interior itself, oh, and we also had our fuel gauge on the side here. Uh, going inside the interior, I had a lot of fun with this too, uh, from the ceiling of the roof here to adding the new rope pieces in game to parachutes to using microprocessors for the roof here, uh, angling the seats here, um, having our controls at the back where we can move this winch up and down, we can lower it down through this hatch over here. Uh, we also have the ramp controls uh, that we can go and control the ramps, all with proper rails on them and tons of paint blocks. I loved playing with those paint blocks. Um, so I had a lot of fun with that. And then going into the front of the cabin where we have more controls here for the winch on the side. Uh, along with that is we have more controls for the back uh, where we can go and turn the green light on obviously for dropping cargo or passengers. Uh, we can lower the ramp straight down into cargo position or into an airdrop position. Uh, it's up to us on what we want to do with that. So that was a lot of fun. And then going into the cockpit where I probably had a, a a good amount of time spent in actually figuring out how to do all the Lewis scripts and things like that and importing in some of the uh, community stuff in here. Now what we're going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and despawn these helicopters uh, and we'll get into that cockpit and we'll play around and we'll actually see how this new helicopter flies uh, and how we can get around and how we use it here in game. And bringing the helicopter back in we're much more lag free obviously having six helicopters compared to one it's much easier. Now one of my general rules here before we actually get in the cockpit was I didn't want to hide anything inside these fuel tanks. I wanted them to completely just be for fuel, uh, like the real thing. So we ended up doing all the logic actually underneath this helicopter. It's all hidden, you can't see it. Um, all underneath the helicopter is pretty much just full of just logic and mic processes. Now going inside here, uh, actually getting to the cockpit for the first time. Now the main design here was that you could either fly from either side. It was up to you. All you would have to do is to use the little breaker here to flip it to co-pilot and co to pilot. It's up to you. We also have obviously instructions on my workshop page for this uh, at the top of the actual cockpit here we have a couple different things including um, our main electric to get that switched on along with that we then have our left landing right and right landing light uh, that was the side lights just over here so that would face like at a nice angled position when we were trying to land uh, along with that we then had our strobe lights navigation lights and beacon lights all angled to all set up to be realistic uh, realistic flashing in terms of double blinks uh, underneath really nice love doing that also uh, we also then have our taxi lights which is obviously just the front lights at the front of the helicopter uh, just obviously when we're taxiing out onto the runway uh, if we need to so that was a lot of fun um, adding all those things in there we then along with have our main batteries and backup batteries on either side our left and right fuel tanks and then obviously our engine controls has always been a difficult thing with Chinooks because you have to get the right air RPS uh, between both the engines and both the road Rotors. So I had a lot of fun obviously and a lot of trouble fixing that and getting that to work out. We'll get the engine started in a couple minutes. We also got Sheep's Dog Marine Radio here and also just a glass cockpit um, design. I think this was from one of the one of the community i have got it linked in the workshop page if you want to go check that out uh, we obviously have the radio and we can use that fully completely and the transponder we can turn on if we want to going into the actual seats here now i'm just going to go over here we have some interior lights that we can go and switch on those are rgb lights that we have at a nice 
dim light, so it's not too bright in the cockpit. Uh, going along with that, we also have the extract and retract fuel probe. Uh, just here in the front, you can see that's gone and just it extracted and you can retract it again. Uh, we also then have a, let's see, on this side, I think we have the altitude just over here. We have the altitude, we also have our bearings, and then on this side, we have our speed indicators. On the screens themselves, uh, we have six different channels along with that, I think eight, eight to 10 different screens uh, on each one of these screens that can be controlled individually. I was very adamant that I wanted those to be controlled individually. Um, so for example, you can flip through the screens. So this is obviously a um, just our HUD here. We also have our, obviously above us our HUDs. Um, going down, we have a map screen here that we can switch to obviously our compass uh, and that you can zoom in and zoom out. Now, now these can be controlled from either side that was another thing i was quite adamant i wanted to do is you can control them from either side depending on what chair you're in they control both of them they're all going off the same lewis scripts uh, along with that is we then have the gimbal camera once again you control it from either side up to you using the same controls nothing else you're not changing controls or anything like that using the same controls same i can jump in that in that here switch to my camera here and I can now control it from this side. So that was very important for me to do get that right. Uh, going along, we then have obviously engine controls. You can go into each engine. This is not mine, by the way. This was a Lewis script that I downloaded from the community. Once again, links in the workshop page. So you can check different engines, temperature, RPS, and thrust. Uh, going down, we also have our fuel. So total, left wing, right wing, you can go into those, see all the details about that. That was really cool, I love that too, once again from the workshop. Uh, and then we also have our generator specs with our batteries that we can go in and check those. You can see obviously our battery is draining a bit because I've got lights and things and screens on, so on and so forth. So that's the six screens. Uh, you can play with them, obviously change them as much as you want to, it's up to you. Uh, I like to just keep them on map and also onto our display here. Uh, along with that, we have autopilot, auto hover, we have our um, altitude to set to going to be feet, uh, brakes, and an auto landing system. Uh, clock, pretty simple, and then obviously our heads up displays. Uh, here is our lifting system. This is going to be front hook, middle, and rear. Uh, and then you can obviously change the camera from either being in the cockpit to the front hook, to the next hook, and to the next hook. As soon as you activate any of these hooks, a uh, light goes on, uh, so you can see what you're going to be lifting, which is quite, I think, a nice little touch uh, to that. Now, um, as I said, a couple other screens here and there, but most of these big ones are the most important ones. Now, actually getting this started up and working is quite simple. Just get the power on, start the uh, starter and the fuel pumps on either side. You will notice that these throttles are synced. Uh, you do not need to touch this. This will do nothing if you touch that. Um, okay, whereas this one is the one that is synced. You can go and increase that. It will increase the second throttle. I like that. Uh, it starts off at 10 which is perfect for just obviously rolling around the um, actual hangar and also on the runway. You increase it up to 20, which is the maximum to take off. Um, nothing special to that. Just remember if you are rolling around on the runway, make sure to take your brakes off here. Uh, that is obviously an important thing you need to go and do. Once we have the throttle up, we can obviously use normal controls to go and control and fly the helicopter as we want. Uh, nothing special there just flies like a regular helicopter. We use our WSAD and left, right, up and down, just like a normal helicopter to go and control it. I do love the shock absorbers in the wheel arches that obviously when you go and hit the ground a little bit too hard, uh, just like we have here, they will go and hit themselves and absorb the shock there. So that's pretty cool. Along with that is in terms of actual controls for the helicopter, um, I did really have fun with the um, autopilot and also with auto hover. Um, now I did use, I think it was Tajin's or TT's autopilot, very heavily modified guys, um, very, very heavily modified, but it took a while to get set up and get it stable to where I wanted it at least. Um, now the first thing is we obviously have our altitude hold, this is in feet um, that we can go and set. So let's go, we're now at like 60, so we can go set, let's say 300. Uh, we can engage it just by putting an auto hover on. You'll see the helicopter is now just going to fly up and reach that altitude and then we should be quite stable you can see our vertical speed is going up here there we go drop there we go and now we should be at our 362 363 perfect almost almost 100 percent along with that we can also use the autopilot now i'm just going to go and fly there random direction just in that direction over there all i have to do is go over to my large keypad put my number in switch it over to autopilot and the helicopter will now fly by itself 
it's going to engage its thrusters in a couple seconds so it starts speeding up so you can see here it has started speeding up and we're doing good speed of around 90 grades 94 95 and that will continue to increase um, which is a lot of fun okay um, you can see our altitude here is obviously 357 same as there um, which is quite nice and then eventually what we're going to do is we're going to get to that point and the helicopter will start slowing down uh, now please if you are going to have fun with this and play around with it be careful with playing with altitude while you're at cruising speed obviously we are going quite faster than what we usually intended to do with the helicopter at the speed because we're using those thrusters um, so it does sometimes get upset so just be careful with that if you do have any wobbling or any stability issues just turn off this autopilot on hover on and off and it will reset itself perfectly fine uh, I'm gonna actually just switch this location over here just to the hangar uh, I want to fly over there so you can see we have come to almost a full stop here um, let's go and change that now it's going to reposition itself it's going then gonna try and fly there I can get out the helicopter I can walk around I can do anything we want to so I do love that option you can see now we're gonna start slowing down um, we come down to where we're meant to be on the actual runway so you can see we're just about there on the position we are just about there I can go and now click on the auto land feature the helicopter is now going to start dropping down it's then going to get quite close to the ground and then it will actually land itself okay a really cool feature I liked um, some water products land by themselves I prefer to do it where you have the option of landing it um, so you can see there it just went drop down use the shock resolvers to slow itself down you could then go and turn everything off, get the RPS down, turn the electricity off, and you're now good to go. You can see the batteries have been charging while we've been flying, which is great. Let's go and turn our electric off, and our helicopter will eventually go and drop its RPS. We can then go and load some cargo if we want to, which is a really fun thing to do. And yeah, that's pretty much about it for the helicopter. As I said, I had a lot of fun with this thing. Um, it was a lot of fun to build and it's come a really long way since we first had the concept and the idea and first released the first helicopter of the Chinook series to the workshop. So I think we'll go ahead and end today's video over there. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it some entertaining and informative as always. And we'll see you in the next one.